Rebecca. What? What are you doing? Look at this mess. You messed up the studio. Oh, so now you're going to start putting stuff away. Right. Uh, this is... We've got to clean this up before Reese comes. I don't know how to do this. This is too... What? Oh, it's... Hello. Arthur, do you know how to... We've we got to clean this. We've got to tidy it. It's like all... Just... No. No, no, not, 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 not like that. Ah, it needs to be more like soulful, right? Like it needs to be more peaceful and, and nice. And right now it doesn't quite look like that. Hang on. Stop, 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 stop. I know someone that can help us. Yeah, I know. Do you remember who? Amelia. Do you remember Amelia? Yes, she likes to take pictures, but she also likes to make spaces look not like this. Make them look nice. She runs a business called Soulful Space, My Soulful Space. And I reckon she can help us. Should we see if Amelia can come help us? Okay. Um, Amelia? I, I, Amelia, come in. Oh, come in, Amelia. Hi, oh, what has happened here? Hi, guys. Don't act all happy. Uh, but what have you been doing? <sighs> Such a mess. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Oh, my gosh. We really need your help. I can see that. Uh, yes. I have no idea. There's stuff here mm. that, like, could be used again, that other stuff that might not be. And I feel like lots of people at home might have a child like Arthur who likes to make a mess. Oh, Arthur, thank you. Is this one of your favourite bears? Well, can you help us? I can help you. Good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what right. do you need? Do well, you want this to be soulful? Yes. Do definitely. Do you want to feel inspired? Yes, definitely. And would you like Arthur to be able to just play for a long time without being distracted and overwhelmed? Yes, definitely. Okay. Well, let's do definitely. that. Definitely. Oh, okay. We found the right person. <laughs> now, Arthur. Can you listen to Amelia, please? She's going to help you. Can you sit down, Arthur, and and help me clean this up? Arthur, <laughs> that's very good. Okay. <laughs> okay, where do we begin, Amelia? Well, first of all, let's just have a look at this space. Okay. So there's a lot going on in here, and I don't know about you, but I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Me too. That's... And if we're feeling overwhelmed... <laughs> Imagine how Arthur would be feeling. Yes. Or children. You have yes, children too, right. don't you? Well, that's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. You have children as well, don't you, Amelia? I sure do. And I know that when my children have a beautiful, clear space, that they're more likely to play for longer and feel calmer. Mm -hmm. And I am then feeling calmer. Yeah. And the whole house just feels nicer. Okay, let's do that here because I think that that definitely needs to happen in this space. Okay, so. Okay, where do we begin? Sometimes it feels really overwhelming. It's very overwhelming right now. Of where to begin, yes. and which is why a lot of people don't even know where to start. That's true. And they don't start at all and they might just shove it all aside. But there is a little bit of a way that we can do this. I don't know what you're doing, Arthur. <laughs> He's flying. Oh, He's you're finding some little treasures. <laughs> you're brushing. So the her. first thing that I'm noticing is there's lots of books. Okay. So I would like to gather all of the books together. Thank you, Arthur. Let's get all the books together first, and okay. then we can choose what books stay and what, what books go. Okay. So there are lots of books everywhere. Yes, lots of books. And I know. Oh, thank you, Arthur. That's not really a book, but we can we can tidy that one up after. And we'll put that there. Thank you. Okay, well, let's move a little space and we'll put all our books here. I know it seems like mess, even messy right now, but it will feel better soon. So we're starting with the books so that it's less overwhelming rather than trying to tackle like everything at once. If we pick up one thing at a time, it is going to feel really, really confusing. But if we put all of the things together in categories, then we can look at each category at a time. And 
Here's some more books. Thank you. Oh, and look, books. then when we put all our books together, we see we've got a lot of books here. Here's and some I don't more. think that any child needs so many books out. There are lots so. of books. Okay. So the the great way about having everything together is that we can notice which ones we really want to keep as opposed to the ones that we don't really like. But if we didn't put them all in a pile and we just put up a book here, we'd say, well, I might as well keep this book and then I might as well keep this book. Mm. But if we see them next to each other, we can say, well, I really love this book. I don't really love this book. Mm -hmm. And we know it's clearer. So let's do that here with these books and we can do it fairly quickly. Now, this is a beautiful little book and it's a really nice story and I like reading it. Okay. So... So you like reading it yourself or you like reading it to your kids? Well, I like reading it to my children. If, if you do not like reading the book to your children, you can get rid of it. Okay. But we'll keep this one. Okay. This is our cute pile. If it's not age appropriate, unless they're going to grow into it, if they've grown out of it, you can let it go. If they're going to grow into it and you think it's a beautiful book, you can keep it. Okay. Uh, Arthur, we're focusing on the books right now. Do you want to help us? <laughs> I know, toys, yes, car. Now this one here, for example, my daughter really enjoyed, but I don't really like the message that these kind of books send. So I'm going to let it go. Okay. And... So you want to give that to Arthur? So uh, so we could have, what we could do is we can have a little box and we can put all the books that we want to donate in one in box. In box, okay. So... And these are our keep books. These, I love this little book, Busy Town Boat Race, and my children love it. Okay. And I think Arthur probably would love that too. Now these have already been read. Okay. And they don't need to be read again. So we'll put those in the getting mm -hmm. rid of pile. pile. This is not really a book that they want to read again. This is probably too old. And a lot of books you can get at the library as well. That is so you true. don't need to keep a lot of books. It's too overwhelming. You keep the ones that are special. Okay. That one's been read. That one's too old. So is this something that you should do with your children present or not? It depends. Okay. Sometimes I will do a little bit with my children present and ask them if they if they like this book or not. Mm -hmm. But because my children are only my children are only three and five, they don't often. Thank you. That looks like a really great book. Do you like that one? So we can keep that one. Okay. They don't often understand the concept. So, much so I'll watch them and notice what ones they love yeah. and what ones they read and I'll make the choice when they're this age. Mm -hmm. But some parents love to do it with their children. It just depends what's going to... That one can go. Um, I love this one. It just depends... Oops. You've given some really helpful things so far. So think about like with the books, if you're going to read them to your children and if you like them, then keep them. Yes. If they're special, if you can't replace them and they have a special place in your life, keep them, obviously. If they're, I tend to get, re I tend to let go of books that either I don't like reading mm -hmm. are damaged, okay. but not because they're beautiful and old and I'll fix them. But if they're just ripped, um, if the kids have, read them and they don't want to read them again. If I don't like the message in the book. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're the main things. Or if they're just not age appropriate. This one, I thought was going to be really beautiful, but my daughter finds the story really sad and she doesn't like to read it. Oh, okay. Classic story, but my children just don't want that. Just so don't I don't need that. to keep that in the house. Get we are at once sorting through all the books. I know. Rid of a few of them that we. This don't one's need. quite nice for children to learn about emotions. Mm -hmm. It's a great little movie, and I found it in a book, so that's good to read to, um, like my five-year-old. She loves Anna and Elsa, but she's got lots of their books. You don't need to have ten of one type of book. Mm -hmm. You can pick one or two. This has beautiful pictures, so we'll keep that. And then we can just quickly go through. That one can go. You can just sometimes use your intuition as well. Sometimes you just go, no, I know that that can go. Or maybe it was like a present from somebody. Yes. And you're like, no. And you don't, yeah, and you don't need to keep everything you get as a gift. The mm. gift itself is what they want to, to give you, like the feeling of that gift. Oh. You don't need to hold the actual gift. And passing it on sometimes is 
a better thing to do. Yeah. Well, what about if some of these books are like okay to re-gift? I know that that can sometimes be a word that some people don't like to hear. Mm -hmm. But, you know, with a sort of wasteful society where in fast fashion, all these types of things, uh, is it okay to give a friend who might have a child a bit younger or a bit older a book? Absolutely. I do. I, I, I re-gift and I don't try to make it look like I've gone out and bought a brand new book. I actually, when I have a um, birthday party for my children, I'll say we'd love to have secondhand pre-loved gifts. And so I really love when people give us, or this is, I thought this was going to be gorgeous, but it's very mature and the story is unusual. And okay. so I'm going to give that one away, yeah. even though I thought it was going to be good. Someone else will like it. At so least. especially like little vintage books, beautiful mm -hmm. classic stories. Running um, out of room. We've got so many books I out know. of our big pile. We'll keep some of these because my daughter loves unicorns and she hasn't read these. So we'll keep them. Okay. And once she's read them, they'll probably go. Do you find that once kids read a book, they're not really going to go back to reading it again? Well, I suppose depending on the book, but they're not really going to go back and read again. It does depend because it is really nice to have a few stories that you read over and over again. And that makes a child feel safe. And then they can really like delve into that story and really, be, mm -hmm. you know, really learn that story. Mm -hmm. They don't need a different story all the time. But with a little child that's got novels, often you don't want to read a novel more than once unless it's a real favourite. Mm -hmm. So that's right. These can go. It didn't even plan it to be like this. It's just going Now this one I really like. It's a really old one. And this is actually one that I would re-gift, even though it's got like little marks and stuff on it because it's a really gorgeous little book with little feely things and what i would say if i was going to re-gift this was this was one of my child's favorite books and now we're passing it on to you and that's lovely so it's kind of you're gifting them hmm. not only like a gorgeous little book but that you're showing them that you're um another part. yes that you're kind of gifting them that like the experience that your children had then you want to give them that experience yeah. so you don't need to go out and buy brand new books all the time um that's a nice little book that could be maybe re-gifted yeah so just not covering up the fact that you're re-gifting yes book. yes i mean unless it's a brand new book and you want you know you can just re-gift it but often they've been used and they're and they're loved and i like to share that with people they can probably go we need to maybe arthur you might have to put these in a box for us please oh can you put them in that box can you Thanks, put them in arthur. the blue box there there's a few more. You might have to actually make it look <laughs> I nice. love these little Julia Donaldson books and they're rhymy and they the kids love them. So we'll keep that. Keep for the, those ones? Yeah. Okay. I love keeping the classics. This isn't taking much time at all. No, and it's fun. Quickly. I really like going through little things. So if, you find, if you've got classic books that you know will be read over and over, like all of these kind of books, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they can all be kept. Now we'll... The frozen one can go. Here you go, Arthur. That might be really difficult to do with the children around. Yes. A book like that. Exactly. So that's why I would do that. And here's another Storm Boy book that is a bit of a sad story <laughs> for little kids. Maybe when they're older, they will be able to... That can go in the box. That's a bit old for my children. And I know that when they get older, we can always find a new book about the night sky. And this is very cute, so I might keep that a little vintage mm -hmm. book about time. And that's a beautiful book. And that is a really cute little story, Wispy Bell. And these can go. Wow, look at that. So then we've got some books that are special. The children enjoy reading, I enjoy reading. And then we can go to the library if we want to get more. Or to the charity shop or to the op shop. I love getting little books at the charity shop and the op shop. And these are the ones that we're going to re-gift. Yes. So let's put these on the side. And we've got all these that we're going to give to a charity shop so that someone else can read them. Yes. Yes. If you're watching this outside of Australia, a charity shop is an op shop where you can go and buy secondhand things as well. thought I yes. just mentioned that. Some countries might not have that. Uh, Arthur, could you... Put that over there with the other ones, please. <laughs> Look at all the things. I, I love looking. I love looking at all the things that we. Oh. <laughs> ah. 
offer. Now, the next thing that I see that's quite obvious is let's just put, let's all gather these and put them all into there. All the Lego. So that, that's one thing that's it's everywhere. I know. Arthur has put it everywhere. It's Arthur! That's so cheating. That's not Lego. That's not Lego, Arthur. <laughs> It's just all these other oh little bits. And I love these kind of old Legos, the big ones. They're fantastic. But what you can actually do is once we put them all in their container, if you have a shelf somewhere, like a cupboard, mm -hmm. you can put some of the toys in there so that they're not always... Thank you, Arthur. That's a little man. So they're not always out for the children. So maybe every two weeks you can swap them and bring oh, the Lego out. Yeah. And then you have it ready for the morning when they come out. And they're like, oh my gosh, it's a new toy. Yes. It's not really. It's just been sitting in there. It has been. Now, there's only certain plastic toys I like to bring into my house because I don't like to have too much plastic because it's not as good for them it's not as good for children to play with. It doesn't have the sensory kind of thing that they enjoy. But I love old Lego. There's something about that that they can get really creative with. Is that? I think that's, that's not Lego. <laughs> okay. So. We'll put that there. We'll keep that. Now, what should we look at next? Now, one thing. Oh my gosh! I found more books hiding. Did you hide these, Arthur? Did you want to keep all of these? Let's see. I think I like this one. We'll keep that. And I think that I know Arthur really likes dinosaurs. So we'll keep that one. In fact, these ones, I quite like a lot of these. We won't keep that one. It's a bit old for Arthur. I won't keep that one. He likes that one. Yes, I think he likes that one. And these ones can all go in there. Over there. Over there. Okay, we're getting through this. The space is starting not to feel so overwhelming. Do you want to keep this one, Arthur? You can put it on the table just behind you. Are uh, these ones keeping? And they're, yes, we can keep them too. Okay. Right. Now, slowly being able to walk around more. Another easy thing we can look at getting, that we can look at donating. Okay. Is all these little things. See all these little things? Yeah. A lot of the time they just accumulate and we end up with all these little bits that we really don't need. Um, especially little things that aren't very good quality and little things that just get, they cause the mess. So okay. I would just straight away say, like, unless they're really special. Just donate them. I donate a lot of these little things. Okay. So they're not like bin stuff. They're just... Well, this one here is a bit stuff. different. So we'll put the soft toys together and we'll do the soft toys after. Okay. okay. But for now, we're doing the little... I little bits. Well, that all goes to... Well, so they all go out. together so they can stay outside. Those... I don't know what this is. Is this something special? Could be, yes. It looks like a so brush, that, boomerang brush. That a boomerang, Arthur was who doesn't need a boomerang, <laughs> a boomerang brush? Arthur wants a boomerang brush. And I, as I'm picking these up, I'm noticing these beautiful little wooden toys, which I really, really like little wooden toys, and children get a lot of use out of them because mm -hmm. they can be really creative with them. So I, I tend to keep wooden toys. And it's not plastic, so you're saying better sensory. With, well, it's with better. Toys. It's better sensory kind of experience for children. They can be more creative with them. Yeah. It kind of gets their imagination running more. So you can say that compared to this. That's yeah. You can already. This see the is difference. just one type of car. It has its pictures on it. It does something, and it, and the child kind of then plays with it mm -hmm. according to what it is. Whereas this can be anything. That's true. So a child can use their imagination. So when I'm out shopping and often at a charity shop or an op shop, I look for little things like this that are really beautiful quality, maybe handmade, and that um, the children can really like make them into anything they want. 
Mm -hmm. So then you have then you don't need so many. You just have one or two of these rather than all the different types of these. What's that? Oh, oh there this you go. One. Ah, <laughs> good job. So I'm going to put all of these little ones. And because I have the wooden cars, I can safely get rid of these little cars unless there's a special one again. Yeah. Or if your kid really, really likes those types of Yes, yeah, so if they really love them, then you can keep them and just have a little spot for them. I would put them all in a little container together. Okay. So that they're all together. And then, I'll... and then, like the Lego, bring them out and put them back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you do what your child loves. Have you found all the little pieces, Arthur? You're not sitting on any. There's none like behind you or so anything. We're put Thank all you. All these little bits away. Put that under the pillows. Nope. And this I'm going to put away, even though my daughter liked it, but it broke. So anything that's broken mm -hmm. and in that you're bed. probably not going to fix, you can let it go because broken okay. things bring your energy down. Okay. So we can get rid of all broken things. There is a bin over there. Okay. As well. So if there's anything, okay, um, you make sure that you're not sitting on any little things. No, oh, that's my face. Any now, I might keep you? that because that's a, one of my daughter's little, um, this little thing? hair clips so she can have that and a little mirror. Okay. So she might use things like this you, for Arthur. imagination play. Mm -hmm. You don't need much for imagination play, but just a few little things. So you can just keep a few of the little things. I'm learning so much. Are you learning much, Arthur? Are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still putting all these little oh, no. things away That'd again, be like helpful, I said. To Amelia. You're being very helpful. So find all the little things. And I found some real rocks while I was throwing out my these fake plastic ones. Oh. And these little real rocks are actually good little toys for the, you know, age appropriate. Mm. Look, you can mm. put them in the back of the little truck and that could be like a little game. There we For go. For a, you know, two year old and up. Yeah, yeah. Thing. Oh, and Arthur. And Arthur. <laughs> Arthur's an exception. You having fun? Okay. And rubbish. Let's just put that straight in the bin. Anything that's not. And these right. textures don't work, so they can go in we the are, bin. We've like now bin. got a little pile of squishy things and soft so toys. So now, see how our space has, and... has gotten a lot clearer? It has. So We've still we'll got keep... lots of cushions and bags and oh, yes. cups we'll get, and stuff we'll get everywhere. There. But... We've got some... Flowers and... Okay, so okay. squishy things. Right. All We've the got squishy... lots of squishy things. That squishy thing scares me. <laughs> so I'm going to put it in there. That can be donated. Someone else can enjoy the squishy thing. Now, these actually would be great sensory um, little toys for someone. I probably wouldn't keep them for my children because they probably might rip them. Okay. Yeah. And so if your children at the age where they wouldn't rip it, then Keep they would the... be great. And you could put them in a little, that might, they might really love that sensory thing. So maybe for slightly older children. Um, Another box. But for now, I'll probably put them here and they could be given to someone. Okay. All right. Is that all the squishy toys are there? Oh my goodness. You're not sitting on any squishy toys? Okay. No squishy toys in there. Oh, look, Arthur, it's your little friend. <laughs> <laughs> you want that one. Okay, Arthur. Now, what do we have? Yes, you can keep it. We have... You can put it up there in the keep pile. Good job. Puzzles. Okay. Now we're back to the puzzles. So I think this puzzle might be missing a piece. So you know what? I've been looking for this piece for so long. Mm-hmm. I think it's time to let it go. Okay. So I am going to donate it just because some children might just play with the little pieces. You don't have to have it as a puzzle anymore. So you can look at different ways that you can recycle and reuse toys. They don't always have to be as they're meant to be. Yeah. Um, so would you write something on there like this piece is missing or? Not necessarily. Not I put, you could probably, if you know that that's gone for good, you could just put these little ones in a little bag. Oh, or if you had a friend that has a little, like, one-year-old or two-year-old, they probably love playing with these, mm -hmm. like that. Just the feeling of the them. Feeling the feeling of them, and they could make a little story with them, Yeah, you know? So there's different ways you can look at. So we'll put them there. Repurposing. Repurposing, yeah. 
And again, my children are pretty much outgrown these kind of puzzles. So I'll let I'll re-gift that one too. Should we put them in a special re-gifting spot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have one up on the table. Oh yeah, okay. They can go there. I think so. Yeah. Oh, hang on, there's another odd ah, yes. thing. But I don't know where that, that must these little go. look at this, Arthur. Oh, the car's not working. The car's meant to go, shoo. Maybe that's not the right car. Right. Maybe there's another car for it. Oh, you can get that working, Arthur. You can go in there. <laughs> we'll keep these little ones because they're quite, that's a little... Actually, I'll get rid of that one because it's got no ear. Um, but these can be used for crafts and for imagination play. Yep. And those two pieces. Oh, there's and another set. These. Oh, look. Is he the Ooh, missing piece? Maybe. Let's have a look. There we go. That one. So that one all comes no. together. And that is a beautiful old... Um, yes, it is the missing piece. Yeah. Yay! This is an old vintage one from mm -hmm. 1985. So wow. I would probably maybe even I'd either re-gift it or keep it as okay. a special kind of keepsake. Okay. So we'll put that in the re-gift pile. Look, it's Spot. Hey, look, Arthur. I grew up with Spot. Spot the dog. The dog is called Spot, not Spot the dog. But you, <laughs> you can spot the dog on there if you want. <laughs> now let's find all the soft toys okay you'll find all the soft toys arthur and there might be some on the desk and chairs there might be and some under chairs and oh, this little dog can go in there everywhere here's some there we are here you go arthur they can go here in this little pile <laughs> oh, look no, at that one. you want to do that one i'll get this big one here yeah. Is that all of them? Is I there any behind think you? So I think we've got them. Okay, so depending on how old your children are, sometimes <laughs> soft toys are one of the things that can just grow to the biggest proportion in your house. I don't know they what's happening with it's like the more you have, the more they attract into the house. Okay. <laughs> you don't need too many soft toys because, okay. again, it overwhelms children. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I would probably think, I would probably keep these because they're so cute and kids could use them as pillows as well. Mm -hmm. And they could use them as a magic for imagination play because they're nice and big and cuddly. Well, that's good because they're so, mine. And yes, like so I think they're, I think they're <laughs> they really... They get to stay, so they five. get to stay. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> My car wallers get to stay. <laughs> now, this little one, I... Oh, I wouldn't keep because it's just not real. It's, would you like to keep this one? <laughs> or what one do you love more? <gasps> You've got to pick. No, look at me. you got to pick. <laughs> <laughs> do you love them both? <laughs> well, if you love them both, how about we put that one in there? That can be that one's baby and then they can both be your baby. Yes, good job. You want to put them up on the table or down here with the koalas? Up there, okay. Now we've got all these hand puppets, which are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. My children have outgrown them now, so I don't need to keep them. I thought that they would use them more than they did, so I tried them, but they haven't really used them, so I'm going to let them go and I'm going to give them to a friend okay. who has smaller children right. and who would like to use them. Oh, gonna, oh. oh, there's a baby. And a baby is always fantastic for any like for girls and boys and for any age really because they love and a baby that's not too like a nice soft body that they can dress and they, they can play with and cuddle and they don't even need anything really they don't even need that many clothes they just need this little baby they can do so much you'd and be it's amazed making a noise too yeah and so this is just an old like fashion little baby doll that I think having one or two little baby dolls is just lovely for children. Mm. You'll know when they grow out of them, but I think until probably like seven or eight, mm -hmm. they would love to have a baby doll. So we'll keep the baby doll. Okay, keep it here. And what have we got left? 
This is a little handmade. Did you make it? <laughs> My niece made it. Actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Got into knitting recently. Uh, she made it when she was little. So we'll keep that with the baby dog because that can be her little toy. Right, because it's sort of sentimental. Because well. it's sentimental, that's right. So you can keep, if something really brings you joy and you love it, you can keep it. Okay. Okay. You okay. just, just feel into what feels good for you as well. Mm -hmm. it's, there's no rules. It's about what feels good. Okay. But just notice the difference between holding on because you think you should and keeping something because it really, you know, that it's going to add to your life. And then, look, we've just what got these beautiful doing? little wooden things left. And I think that we could keep all of those wooden things because there's, like, this is a great little one. Where are, There's two people missing, but who knows where they could be. We'll find them. This okay. one, Arthur, yeah. you can, like, dr drive around. And we can put the little bricks in. And if you just had this out for children, they're going to be able to spend their time and put their energy into playing with these, whereas if we got this again and poured it all over the floor, their attention is going to be on all these different things they can do. And they'll be moving from one thing to the other to the other. Mm -hmm. And then they just get overwhelmed. Yeah. So okay. this is why we try to take, create space and keep beautiful things that the children are going to get a lot of use out of mm -hmm. and then take away the other. If you're really not sure and you want to keep some, but you don't want everything out, like I said, put it in a cupboard. And every two weeks, bring something new out and put something away. Mm -hmm. And then just notice what your children keep going back to. And then you can sometimes sneak the things away. <laughs> <laughs> just luxurious <lock> kids. <laughs> yes. Um, what about all this other stuff that's everywhere? Well, I've there's... noticed there's some clothes. Oh, there's you... Arthur, look behind you. <laughs> okay, we've got some clothes. Can I uh -huh. take the clothes? Okay. So put them in the pile. And there's some shoes as well. That doesn't, I think it's too, <laughs> too small for you. you. <laughs> I think he's trying to, nope. Oh, Arthur. Throw it over your head and I'll just be here to catch it. Like, you, you throw it over your head, uh, that's. Arthur, did you wear these when you were tiny? <laughs> what about the shoes? <laughs> oh, for baby. There's some shoes here too. Oh, oh, you missed some little pants. Oh, the pants on your <laughs> Newborn babies' clothes from the op shop or charity shop at like trip four zero oh. or five zero or three zero are a great way to get dolls' clothes. So you don't need to go oh. and buy special dolls' clothes, which are obviously uh, which are often not very good quality, and they don't fit many baby dolls. I just get little real babies clothes from the charity shop so you're and saying you could keep all of or well, some of your you could keep some of your baby's clothes. baby clothes mm -hmm. for, for dress ups for later i never thought um, of that or before. just go and get some little like triple zero or four zero clothes from the charity shop and use those for the dress up clothes and they're probably more stylish too and they're better quality and they're mm -hmm. often like quite cheap to get because you you know you, you don't need that many you just get a little bunch and then the kids are happy we haven't found out what we're doing with the shoes after I think Arthur just likes putting things in boxes. I think so too. Now, with clothes, again, less is more. If children have too many clothes, they get confused, they get overwhelmed, they don't know what to get, you know, it takes time for them to get dressed. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we have have a simple, manageable wardrobe for our children, it's much easier for them and for us and we're not doing washing all the time and yeah. folding clothes all the time. Okay. So, so it's like Arthur, he has two t-shirts and two pairs of shorts. That's right. And he doesn't need to think too much about what he wears in the morning. No, he just picks, am I going to wear that shirt or am I going to wear the Arthur shirt? <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> yeah. You just pick which one you want. Yeah. And what about your shorts? You just got black pair of shorts and don't pull your shorts up too high. You don't want to see undies. <laughs> you like those shorts. Okay. Cool. Let's go back so, to Amelia. These shoes my daughter really wanted, but every time she puts them on, she goes, oh, they hurt my feet. Aww. So I am just... Making them disappear, right? Making them disappear. So should we put these in the charity box Yes, that's pile? the charity box. And these she's grown out of, but she loved and she got so much use out of them. So I'm going to give them to her little friend who is about a year and a half younger than her and she fits all her clothes that she grows out of, all the good quality clothes. Yes, of course. And then I, so I'll put them in there. 
So they've got to be good they've, quality, that's right? That's right. So how Seems do you check old, that? Well, you just make sure that the sole is still in good quality. Like if I wouldn't buy them for my child from the charity shop, say, mm -hmm. I wouldn't re-gift them to another child. Yeah. Yeah. So I have put a couple of pairs in the bin that the this was all falling off. Yeah. And if yeah. they look really scruffy, you don't really want to keep them unless they're going to be outdoor shoes anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Do they fit you? No. <laughs> and another thing with shoes, I like to try to get, I always check the sole again. Like I always check it's a nice sole because you want your children to be able to run around and have fun not with those tiny little soles with no grip that they might look nice, but really your child is not getting any support. So it's about having clothes that you know are going to last, you know mm -hmm. are going to be comfortable and that your child is comfortable in. Okay. So, so these are keep. Yeah. And so again, because my children are three and five when I, cause I like, I love Gifting. charity shopping because children's clothes can be expensive. Look, and... Arthur. Ah, oh, we lost one. Um, it's the kookaburra. Okay. <laughs> and what I do is when I, if I see a beautiful pair of leather shoes and something that they might be a bit bigger, I take them home and I put them in the, a little box or bag. Mm -hmm. And so the next season or the season after, I've already got shoes ready for my children because children go through things quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think if there's any parents watching this, they'll know that if you spend hundreds of dollars on clothes and shoes every season, it's a lot of money. Yeah. So um, this... Too little, unfortunately. Sorry. Plus white. I don't normally do white for my children. Do white because it gets dirty. <laughs> so that can be re-gifted because my friend's children seem to look after their clothes more than my <laughs> child. <laughs> uh, that one is a little bit too small as well now. So that can be re-gifted. She didn't like these because they felt tight. As soon as she put them on, she said, I don't like them. So I thought, well, I'm not going to keep them because... Otherwise, she's every time she puts them on, she's going to say, I don't like these. The same thing. Yeah. You want them to be able to put clothes on without thinking about it and feel comfortable. What about this? And this was a little bit small as well, but I do love this because it's simple and I like the colour and I like the fabric. Mm -hmm. So it just needed to be a little bit bigger, but that's something that I'll keep my eye out for. And again, I can pass that on to someone and else. And she got a bit of use out of it this season. So that was great. Okay. Right. Oh, we've done so much. You're getting a bit so, tired, Arthur. It's yeah, I know. Work, moving, isn't going, it? isn't it? But what's next? So now we let's got? just put the things that we're getting rid of over here That's so we good. know. So we don't get confused. We've got a clear space. Arthur's keeping them and these. Okay, what's, so what's next? Now we just want to tidy the space, don't we? Yes. Right. So how do we do that? Now we've got some dirty mugs. Let's take them straight out and put them all in the kitchen. Okay. I'll take them. We won't give them to Arthur because they're breakable. That's right. So we'll you just... should drop them, Arthur. And get those two as well so they can go out. So anything that doesn't belong in the room, we'll put our little flowers back in. Do you want to put the wooden toys in here, Arthur? There you go. In there. So what else? We... And here's another box. Now, is this hat one that we would like to keep? Oh, that's my hat. Oh, oh my gosh. See, when you tidy up, you find things that you've been looking for, which is great. I my hat. Thank you. I like my and hat. And is this your beach bag? It is. <laughs> oh, look. There you go. And look, I even found your towel. Oh, excellent. So now you're all ready and set for the beach and you don't have to go through a pile of kids' toys to find your things. <laughs> Not going to let you put this anywhere. And do you know what? Cushions are a great... <laughs> That's mine. That's mine. That's if mine. you're not using them on your couches, <laughs> they're a great way to set up a play space for your children. Okay. So <laughs> how would just... we do that? Well, so got... I would set this play space. Got all up. these. And, and just, just the toys. And I'll put yep. these back here with the others. So this is, there we go. It's a little play space for Arthur. There you and go. these. Down and play now. Are these for your outside space? 
Oh, you want to go to sleep? Well, we're almost finished. Oh, look, you can go to sleep. Look, you can curl up with your teddy. teddies. There you go. Okay, have a good nap. <laughs> you, you, you make yourself comfy. Uh, what else? I'm just going to let Amelia do her thing now. So, she's so good at this. Now, do we want to change the furniture and pop that where you'd like it? We could. Where Where do you think? Maybe we could put it So here we just want, the, we want our... In the middle. Could put some flowers on there. Yeah, we, we just want it. our chairs next to each other so that we can sit and have a little chat while Arthur has a it, little nap. Here's a little bag. Oh, we found another now. thing. Oh, and look, I found another thing. Oh, so many things. <laughs> I can go in there. Well, Arthur seems very happy in this new space that we've created here in the studio. And that's something that happens a lot, isn't it? Once you create a more open area, kids are more happy. Absolutely. Like, if you create the space for children and for adults, they're just, it, you take away the clutter and it brings in just that feeling of peace and just that kind of inspiration and just that restful feeling because there's no way little Arthur could have laid on that ground before because he would have had <laughs> toys sticking into him and it would have just been chaotic. And so you can see how now he feels really restful and relaxed. And I think that's how we all feel when we've created a beautiful space and taken away all the mental mm, clutter as mm, well as the actual mm. clutter because it does make a big difference in our the way we feel yeah mm. there's so many toys on the ground and even just these chairs they were spread out and you didn't have this nice comfortable space that we can now be relaxed and have a bit more of a chat because before i just yes. called you in we're like come on help yeah, i've just made a mess <laughs> <laughs> that's right uh why do you like decluttering and making spaces soulful and, and nice well I just really loved doing it like it just was a natural thing I liked doing whenever I went into someone's home or even into my own space I'd look and I'd think oh that could be done like this and I'll just imagine how it could look and feel mm -hmm. and I would often want to declutter friends you know I'm like can we declutter your wardrobe can we declutter your and what would they say sometimes they would let me <laughs> <laughs> sometimes not um so then one day I just thought this would be a really lovely business because I like connecting with people I like talking to people and I like supporting people to create a beautiful space that feels good for them mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. today we saw like we did this together yes we did and we created this space a it lot took of a really long time too it, by the way tiring, <laughs> it is it? it is and it actually is and that's not something that you're just that's kind of a random thing it is actually exhausting and that's why a lot of people don't actually get around to doing it because you go through even more chaos to get to the other side which is where I come in because I support the process from the kind of the vision of what the client wants mm -hmm. and helping them through the chaos and the emotions that come with often letting things go and then yeah, to that's the, true. And then to the final, the end product where they feel like actually like um, represents where they're at and they feel better. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of letting go in the process. It's not an easy thing for a lot of people. So I love the whole process and I love supporting people and helping them create the space that's right for them and letting go of the things that they need to let go of. It's not about me. It's about me supporting them to do what's right for them in, at their own pace as well. So it doesn't need to take an hour or 40 minutes. It It's okay if it takes longer. It usually takes much longer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. Right? Well, that's normal and it, okay. and it's absolutely okay. Unless if, if people are wanting to do it themselves at home and they know that it's going to feel a bit overwhelming, just start with a little spot, mm. you know, and do a few little spots because it can, like if you just, take everything out and put it on the floor and then you get overwhelmed it's not you know you're going to be left with that so it does often it takes more time than you think until you get more practiced and better at it so yeah now besides uh stalking you on social media and my soulful space uh 
Is there anyone else that you recommend for people that are watching this conference this year to check out? Yes. Yeah, so you can get plenty of free kind of inspiration online or mm -hmm. read books. One book that I really love is called Simplicity Parenting by Kim Payne. Yeah. It's really a very holistic approach. It's all about kind of supporting your children with their rhythm in their day and simplifying that, simplifying life, simplifying food we eat and just right taking back, like taking a step back from things that can overwhelm children and the family. And he goes really beautifully into um, decluttering and simplifying the children's space. And that has really inspired me a lot. Um, even with my own children, because it's harder to do it for ourselves mm -hmm. than it is to do for other people. So mm -hmm. I need to call on inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, also, like I just look up, I'll just look up decluttering for parents, minim minimalism for parents. Find someone that resonates and that you enjoy watching, and then just follow them and just do little bits at a time. And as long as it's fun, that's the most important thing. Yeah. Well, if you've just come in and you've seen this lovely soulful space that we have created go back to the beginning of the live video when it mm -hmm. ends and look at the mess and we've only ended up with just that stuff over there on the table and some mm -hmm. of that we're giving to other people who you know your friends and um, people that need it and then mm -hmm. some of the stuff you're keeping and everything else well that's already gone that's uh, right and that was a lot uh, and so just out of this whole space that's all we've kept and some of it you're giving away anyway. That's right. To other people. Like. That's right. And less is more. When you give a child an empty space with a few cushions and a couple of little, you, should, you see what happens. <laughs> you, you're like, it's the most amazing thing to see what they come up with. If you put a, ch a child in a room full of toys, you see what happens. They'll melt down pretty quickly. So it's very different. Less is definitely more. Well, thank you for sharing your time with us today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and don't go too far because the next bit we're going to be chatting with you about photography and taking pictures of your children and families on cameras and on mobile phones as well. So mm -hmm. to give the families a bit more of a tips and hints on how to take some really good photos. Yeah, you're looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't go too far away. And thanks for joining us at the first ever Kids Arthritis Conference 2021.